Now, let's consider the steps for deriving the runtime function t of n. So we need to consider inputs of size n that require maximum time and when we're conducting worst case analysis, which we're going to trace through each line of the algorithm and we are going to assume that elementary operations such as incrementing a value variable or updating its value occur in constant time. When we come across sequential blocks of code or steps, we will have the runtime added. So if we have two blocks, T1 and T2, will be the representation of their runtimes of the blocks, respectively, and then we sum those runtime functions to get the runtime of the sequential blocks of the algorithm or the code. Similarly, for loops, we will sum the runtime for each iteration of the loop. So ti of n is the runtime of the ith iteration of the loop on input of size n, and then we get the total runtime by summing and all other runtimes for each iteration. We will be using a few common summations. So the first is the arithmetic series, which is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of i, and that is theta of n squared. Similarly, we will also use the generalized arithmetic series, which is the summation as i goes from 1 to n of theta i to the p, and that will be theta of n raised to the p plus 1. For the geometric series, which is the summation as i goes from 0 to n of a constant raised to the i, this is theta of c to the n. And finally, for the harmonic series, the nth partial harmonic series, where i goes from 1 to n of 1 divided by i, we will use the bound of theta of log n for that. So we'll be using these series, which you may have seen already. Okay. Now let's go through an example of deriving the expression for the runtime in terms of the input size for the number of steps required to solve a problem or to run a code. So now, if we look inside main, we can see that we are updating variable. We would say this just takes constant time. Updating this variable, and we should probably declare also x, constant time. Comparing i to x, constant, incrementing, constant, comparing i and x again, constant, adding 2 to x constant, returning 0, constant. So you'll see that this is all sum of constants. So we say t of n is just the sum of constants here. So. And you, can, you don't have to be so precise. So it's just that's equal to some big constant, see? And when we do this, when we just have a constant, we say that t of n is big O of 1. So that's what we use for when we just want to show that this is just constant amount of time required for this snippet of code. Now, when we have loops, we want to take the sum over all of the iterations that are run. So the inside of this for loop in main, so we have a, a loop going as i goes from 0 to n minus 1, so n iterations, and we have the same work we had just done. So here we have this we know is some constant amount of work, and then we have a for loop. And we want to translate this for loop into a summation. So i is going from 0 to n minus 1. Now, how do we turn this into a function? So we, OK, so looking at the code, we say t of n is equal to the summation as i goes from 0 to n minus 1 of C. Well, you'll notice that when we do those iterations, we are adding C n times. And when we do that, we are getting 
big O of N. And actually, in this case, it's going to be theta because it's going to be taking the same amount of work on any input. But the key point is that when we have for loops, we add the amount of work done on each iteration, and that's why we have our summation. So just to discuss some of the skills that we develop when we're doing runtime analysis, and I will be very clear in the example. So first thing that we have to do is we have to set up an expression for the number of operations or steps. So that's setting up the expression of T of N, and I will do those in blue, the color blue in all of our examples. Then you have to solve to get a closed form. And this I will always do in green in our examples. And what I mean by closed form is that we need to have a function t of n, which is only expressed in terms of n and any necessary constant. So it, it no longer has any summations in it. So in order to do this, we would have to have our series summation and then solve the summation. And when we get to recursive functions and algorithms, we would have to solve our recurrence relation. In these examples, we're not dealing with any recurrences in, the, in these videos. We'll, we'll do that in a subsequent video. And then finally, once we have our closed form for our runtime function t of n, we have to put it in asymptotic bounds. And I will be doing that in purple. So when I write in purple, that will be for the asymptotic bound for T of N. So these are the three main steps of getting a bound for the runtime. And the important aspect is you'll notice we are separating out applying asymptotic notation from how we actually derive the function for T of N. So now let's jump into it now. So here, we're, we have a loop, nested for loop, and we want to develop an expression for the runtime in terms of the input size for the number of steps required. So now I'm going in blue because I'm going to trace through this code down. And often when I'm dealing with for loops, I deal with the innermost for loop first. So here we're trying to find an expression, an upper bound for t of n. So here, I know inside, just updating this image array is going to take constant time. And then I have this inner for loop. And I know this inner for loop has j going from 0 to n minus 1. And then I have an outer for loop, which has i going from 0 to n minus 1. OK, so that's our first step. We step through all of the code. And now we have our t of n expressed in terms of two summations. OK, now I'm changing colors because we are applying a different skill. And the skill we're applying now is resolving this function t of n to get a closed form. So the first thing we do is I look at the innermost loop, and I know that I will add c n times once for each iteration of that for loop and each summation. So I'm going to be adding c n times. And then for this outer summation, I'm going to be adding cn n times. And this represents the work done in the outer for loop. So then I have c n squared. Once you have t of n expressed in terms of n and constants, you have found the closed form. Now we have to get the asymptotic bound. And in this case, c times n squared is big O of n squared. So n squared is definitely a big upper bound of c of n squared. But now we have to think about the lower bound. So when we think about the lower bound, 
we want to think, does there exist an input to this code that requires n squared? And it turns out that there is. And basically, this code behaves the same for any input that we give it. So now we know that the upper bound and the lower bound match. So the, there we have theta of n squared, because we know that this code behaves the same for any input. There's one thing that I want to mention as many of the examples that we're discussing is the code will behave the same or the algorithm behaves the same for any input. So since this code is the same for any input, there exists an input requiring big omega of n squared and that is where we get the theta of n squared because we already traced that it takes big o of n squared.